What's up guys welcome back to the channel i appreciate you all tuning in as always you already know the deal if you're new to the channel hit that dang subscribe button and smash that big thumbs up it helps out more than y'all know um so i don't know if y'all can tell but we are backed up to the shop door and you can probably see it but we've got our five speed nv 3500 out of our parts truck sitting in the bed of the truck um i just got here to the shop i went home uh i think it may be in the beginning of the video but went home pressure washed degreased all the goods getting everything prepped and ready uh for install um and what we're doing like say if you guys are new to the channel we're doing a 4l60e automatic to an nv3500 five speed manual transmission swap and it's in the truck i'm sitting in right now a 2000 model regular cab short bed chevy 1500 it's got the 5.3 um and I gotta have my five speed. I wanna bang through some gears in this thing. Um, now, there's a lot of different speculations to this transmission and this swap. Um, a whole lot of little teeny little different details. Some people do things different, um, but this video is gonna more or less, I'm gonna go over everything that you're gonna need to complete this swap. Um, like saying, it's how I'm doing it. Not everybody does it the exact same. Some things go a little differently. Um, some swaps aren't exactly the same. Uh, but my engine is completely stock. This truck is 100% stock. Nothing else done to it. Um, so it's going to be a straight up, straightforward, um, automatic to manual transmission swap. Um, so like I say, guys, if you're new to the channel, hit that dang subscribe button. Um, I might get into the shop. We're going to get this thing unloaded. I'm going to lay out some parts and uh, I'll just kind of touch base with you guys here and there and uh, see, see what the hell we can get into. Now, obviously, right out of the gate, you're going to need the NB3500 manual transmission. Um, obviously, there's several different routes you can go, NB3500, NB4500, T56, etc. But this swap, we're doing an NB3500. Um, now, there's a few different ways to go about accessing one. You can do it like we did and get a parts truck specific to your needs. Or you can get online, order one from a distributor, go to a junkyard, yank one out. Um, there's several different ways to go about getting them. Um, now, there is several different variances of the NV3500. Um, they're shared between Dodge and GM. Uh, Dodge and GM NV3500s will not interchange. Don't try it. Um, you can find, a, for some reason, it seems like a whole lot more Dodge NV3500s. I don't know why. That's just by my 
shopping over the past couple months for them. Um, but they will not interchange. Now, between S10s, uh, light duty trucks, and medium duty trucks, uh, like the S10s going up to the Chevy 1500, they will interchange. Um, just some things like your cross member placement, um, drive shaft length uh, may need to be short, shortened or lengthened. Um, and then sometimes, but I doubt it for any of y'all's applications, but sometimes your master cylinder, the bore size has changed, but I think that's like 92 and uh, before. Anything newer than that, don't have to really worry about it. If it, this is actually a six cylinder and I could pull the master and uh, slave out of it and throw it in the truck over here and it's a V8. Um, it will work. Uh, parts trucks in 05, the one that's going in is a 2000 model. Uh, that will work. And so, like I say, and like I say, Jeeps, they've got NV 3500s, but I think it's specifically the NV 30, 3550. You guys can correct me if I'm wrong there. Um, but there, there is tons of NV 3500s and tons of different vehicles. You just got to pick which one's going to actually work. Oh, yeah, and sometimes uh, your tail shaft is a little different on the, between the light duty and medium duty trucks. Or, yeah, light duty, medium duty. Uh, anyway. Huh. <sighs> I lost my breath on that one. Um, but so like I said, go find yourself a manual transmission. Be happy. Get yourself shipping through gears. So I don't think I've mentioned it yet, um, but for those of you that are curious and you're just, you're just not 100% familiar, you're a little new to the game, um, these 5.3s and these Chevy 1500s never came backed up with the MV3500 manual transmission. Um, now, never fear. If that's what you guys are kind of stumped on, um, the 4.8 is virtually identical. Same goes for the 6.0, virtually identical. So whenever you're going to order parts, if you don't have part numbers, but I'm gonna have all the part numbers in the description below, so just look there. Um, if I miss one, I'll add it here or there. Um, I'll, I'll try to make sure and get them all. Uh, but if you're getting on Google, if you're looking for parts, just buy your stuff for a 4.8 V8 Chevy 1500 truck. Um, it should be 99 to 07, I believe. All those parts should interchange. Um, just if, just if you guys were curious. Yes, I know the five-speed was never offered with the 5.3 engine, uh, but that's okay. I think I said it before, uh, but if I didn't, if you guys choose to go the route that I'm going and you're using a parts truck, um, your slave and master from a 4.3 or 4.8, either one. They will work for the application. You can use either one, six cylinder or V8. Um, either or, they'll work so long it's uh, basically the same year model. Like mine, 99 to 07, so long I'm in there, either one will work. Um, there's a couple different types of slave cylinders and stuff, but they will interchange. Um, now, I'm going to try to kind of, <laughs> my God, I can't talk. I'm sorry, guys. It's Sunday. I'm tired. I'm going to try and kill two birds with one stone. Um, here is my slave cylinder and my master cylinder if you guys want to grab the part numbers on them Like I say I bought mine for a 4.8 truck um, But either ones will work. I just figure go ahead get the ones for the v8 um, But I'm gonna pull off this front bearing cover here and I'm gonna re-gasket this back side here um, Just make sure it's sealed up good and I'm gonna go ahead and install my slave cylinder and have it ready um just because so we can keep things going so when it comes time to install i don't have to it's just two bolts for the slave and i'll actually compare that slave down there is what came out of the truck for a six for a six cylinder and this one is for a v8 they are virtually identical and i'll show you guys here in a second um, but i'm gonna put you guys on time lapse i'm gonna get this all regasketed. i'm gonna get this bad boy installed um, and i'll kind of open up the master and show you guys it too um, but let's knock this out real fast
pretty remedial stuff you guys um got that front cover re-rtv'd um and like i said that's not something you guys have to do that's just something i did if she's leaking throw smart tv on there if not hey send it uh but the slave itself it's just two 10 mils top and bottom as you guys can see very easy um i just snugged them up i'm not sure of a torque spec um i just snugged them up they're pretty small bolts don't go crazy and snap them because you don't want to have to start an entire new job especially on a sunday come on uh but so just two 10 mils uh it lines itself up itself you just gotta make sure of course your uh hydraulic line goes through the bottom your bleeder screw lines up at the top hole here um so like i say really simple install here is went ahead and got it over here the six cylinder slave cylinder <laughs> that's a bunch of cylinders uh, but it is actually the exact same part number i don't know if you guys can see that there and if you guys can see that there exact same part number um so it's the exact same part like I say guys six cylinder v8 they're the same with that going with that your master cylinder will be the same like I say you follow your braided line on up you've got your quick disconnect right here and then you've got your quick disconnect right here where they match up um this is what runs to your firewall and we'll talk about that here in just a little bit uh but it's it's not a bad install at at all guys if you have the proper parts um this is what all comes with the kit we're at uh your uh slave cylinder does come with a new service o-ring for the quick disconnect portion on your master if you need that i'm just gonna stow it away because it already has a new o-ring on there uh but so as far as slave and master though as far as slave and master goes there you go I'll put it on the screen um, earlier in the video whenever I show you guys the part numbers, but somehow I got the wrong master cylinder. Um, I don't know if I got my part numbers mixed up. I don't know 100% sure how that happened, but we got the wrong one. If you guys rewind to the video and look at the uh, master cylinder that I got over there, um, I believe it's maybe for an earlier model, uh, Chevy 1500, I don't know, maybe an OBS truck. I'm not 100% sure. Um, but this is the style masher that we're going to need. Um, and of course, it's new. Could have used it. But I went snip snip, if you guys remember in the last video. Uh, but so I'm going to get a new one of these ordered. I think Parts Geek has got them for like 50 bucks. So I'm just going to order one of those. But here is our pedal assembly. And that's what you're going to need. And this one's actually been replaced. Um, I live in Onesboro, Kentucky. And this is about 30 minutes from me over in Indiana. Uh, but I assume it's from the dealer. If I if my if i would guess i'd say it's from the dealer it says kenny kent right there that's a dealer over there um but this is your pedal assembly or clutch clutch pedal assembly it's just held on by three bolts um and uh you'll you might have an electrical connection i didn't for this application but for your uh master cylinder here it's just a little push tab and this unlocks from inside the firewall i'll show you guys when we go to installation i don't know why i'm telling you how to install and uninstall but you're gonna need your pedal assembly and i'd imagine that's a part number but like say all the legit part numbers will be in the description below we're filming as we go you know we gotta weed out all the wrong shit <laughs> But so, clutch pedal, it's easy, three bolts. Um, it's kind of hard to finagle up underneath the dash and everything, but you do not have to unbolt the dash. You may have to move a fuse block to get the to get it all out of the way, um, but you do not have to remove the dash. As far as clutch kits and flywheel, um, of course, it varies between applications, um, but for mine specifically, uh, the 5.3 V8, but the MB3500 up to it. I am going with a 4.8 clutch and a 4.8 flywheel. Uh, now, both of these are off of summit.com. Um, I've got the Center Force clutch kit. Um, I, I think it's an aftermarket clutch, um, but like I say, these MB3500s, they're not made uh, for high horsepower builds. Um, I think confidently you could run nv3500 every day with a five 600 horsepower max truck i think we're gonna put that to the test i promise uh, but i'm thinking that's gonna be about peak for them five 600 i'm thinking more of the 500 horsepower range but anyway this is their aftermarket clutch there's part number there and i went with the oem uh summit flywheel for the 4.8 of course but there's a part number there if you guys want to get it 01 to 2012 um why oem flywheel just tolerance is more or less you get into aftermarket applications tolerances change um, engagement changes with your clutch if you're doing a swap and you want to keep it factory just go factory components um, of course clutches 
that doesn't really matter. Um, but we, like I said, we went with the center force clutch. Um, like I said, it, it's a nice kit. Comes with pilot bearing, comes with throw out bearing, comes with all the bearings you need. And it does come with supplied hardware. Uh, but I've upgraded the ARP hardware, which I also suggest if you guys want to grab that part number. Summit has these as well. Here it is. Uh, you guys don't come kill me. Let me cover up my dress. Here is everything that I got. Uh, all the part numbers. Clutch, flywheel, pressure plate bolts, flywheel bolts. I'm just missing flywheel bolts right now, but that's okay. Um, but there's everything you need. There's all the prices if you guys want it. Let me see if I can get a total price. There's the total price. Clutch, flywheel, hardware. That's what you're looking at if you're going to do this swap. Um, oh, yeah. And you get stickers, uh, but it comes with an alignment tool. Um, these are, uh, you're going to be using dowel pins to align uh, your pressure plate to your flywheel. Um, so keep that in mind. It is in the instructions as well, so you don't miss out on that. Let me set this back in place. So pretty simple. Um, it's hard to mess up, guys, if you do your research, and that's why I'm trying to kind of touch base on all of it. Whenever I go into installation, um, you guys just subscribe to the channel. Stay with me um, because we're going to be going over everything. And if you have any questions, um, anything you guys want to see that I'm not putting in the videos, leave a comment in the comment section below because I know this swap is a hot one. A lot of people are trying to do it and a lot of people want to do it. Um, and I'll, I want to show you guys every step of the way. Um, and hopefully you guys join in on the fun and subscribe to the channel. So let's keep on rocking. Now, one thing in particular, it seems like nobody can ever get a straight answer on is when it comes down to electrical. Um, now, I'm talking about your computer, your ECM in particular. There's plenty of other electrical stuff to go over, um, like your speed sensor, reverse lights, clutch pedal position sensor, etc. But we can touch base on that on install. I'm talking about your computer right now. Stuff you're going to have to spend your hard-earned bucks on. That's what this video is for, fellas. Um, now, I'm no expert. Never claim to be, uh, but I'm pretty sure you don't have to do anything to your computer. Um, so long you're all right with your dash looking like a Christmas tree um, and your truck doing some funny stuff. Um, but I'm gonna do it the right way. I'm a butthurt about this stuff and you should be too. Um, for this upgrade, this swap in particular, I'm gonna send my computer off. Texas Speed has got a guy that you can send your computer into or if you're set up with HP tuners or Holly EFI, uh, you can get a tune emailed to you and you can upload it to your computer yourself. Um, I'm not set up with HP, um, no Holly EFI, nothing right now. We will in the future whenever we go to do an engine upgrade and stuff like that. Uh, but for this upgrade, I'm just gonna send the computer off. Um, just unbolt it, send it off, they'll reflash it, send it back. You could also go down to your local dealer, see if they'll reflash it for you. But sometimes them dealers just get a little bit finicky and they don't want to do stuff like that for you. Um, but that's about it, computer-wise. Whenever it comes down to it, do it right. You can send that computer off. You can get set up with tuners like HP, EFI, Holly, blah, blah, blah. You can get set up with them. You can try to do it yourself. You can try to go over and retune it yourself. But I suggest you get a, a file sent over to you from a reputable tuner and just flash it to your computer and be good to go. Uh, so like I say, it's nothing crazy. It's just a whole lot of wishy-washy information out there about it. Now last, but certainly not least, you guys are gonna need a way to bang through them gears and get that smile going on your face that you car and truck enthusiasts know all too well. You guys know what I'm talking about, that shit-eating grin. You're gonna need a damn shifter. If you're like me, you get a parts truck, you probably already have a shifter that will work, will get you on the road, but if you're going a different route and you need a shifter for your MB3500, I've got a stock replacement here, and here is your part number. Uh, very priced very, very well. Um, like I say, there's a few different uh, versions to this transmission, but there's your, there's your specific part number if you guys are looking for it. Now, I went ahead and ordered the new shifter because um, I think I'll have the transmission in before I get the other shifter I'm getting. Um, and I don't want to use this old sloppy bastard. I'm just going to throw this factory one in, which will still be a little sloppy. Um, but talking about sloppiness in the shifter, I do not like the feel of this factory shifter at all. So, I hit up my guys, Core Shifters. Um, they are a hot commodity. Prices are going up and up and up, just like everything, um, but they are the equivalent to the Hurst Short Throw. 
Um, I believe it's a Hurst stick and Hurst uh, shifter, shifter knob, uh, but it's a core short throw. Um, the shifter itself down below is core and the stick on up from the rest of the way is Hurst. Um, I believe the Hurst short throw, I think I said this earlier, is discontinued and they took on, or I don't know exactly how it went, um, but core shifters is an amazing, amazing alternative for your factory shifter. And it's a short throw, we get that notchy feel and that's what I'm going after because I'm using this truck to play. Um, and I'll leave a link below to the one I got, but it's, I think it's gonna be two more weeks or something before it comes in. And I'm hoping like hell I can have this swap done right around then. Beans we get the computer back and all that stuff, which we're gonna work on in the next video. Um, but so, that's basically it. If I think of anything else that I missed out on uh, or that I see I missed while I'm editing, I'll leave it in the link below. If you guys have any suggestions, any recommendations, make sure and comment below or hit my email. Um, it'll always be in the description. You guys hit me up, talk to me, let me know. Um, like I said earlier, I'm no expert. <laughs> We're all just out here having fun learning, guys. Um, but so, that's the list. That is effectively going to end today's upload, you guys. Um, I hope you enjoyed. Um, I, I know, surely to goodness, somebody learned something from it. Uh, but we've got plenty of videos to come on this swap. Um, we've got install. Of course, we've got a couple other things we'll probably run into that we'll go over together. Uh, but I'm super excited about the swap. I'm actually sitting in the truck that it's going in, that the five speed's going in, that is. Um, I was crawling around looking underneath the dash and whatnot for the pedals and stuff. It's gonna be an easy swap, guys. Everything's laid out right in your face. Um, the only thing I can see that's gonna be a little different on my application is the, if you're looking at the clutch pedal, uh, that's a little weird, I just wanna tell you guys. If you're looking at the clutch pedal, there's two bolts going straight into the firewall and then one going straight up towards the top of your dash. That upper hole, I don't necessarily know how it's gonna line up. I couldn't see a mounting point, but the, everything else was clear right in your face where everything was gonna be need to be drilled, et cetera, et cetera. Um, there's gonna be some hole falling involved, all that good stuff, but it's not gonna be bad, and I'm super, super excited. Now, like I say, um, if I feel like there's anything that I missed that you guys need uh, to have added to the list, there'll be a link in the description. All the part numbers will be in the description, of course. Um, I know me talking, um, I forget stuff. I get to rambling and forget stuff. My mind just kind of goes everywhere. <laughs> uh, but, so, that's gonna do it. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel for more future content. Um, if you guys don't know, and if you've made it to the end of the video, um, I don't just do this kind of content. I do diesel content, Jeep stuff, just about everything. So subscribe for more. Um, I hope you guys are excited. Uh, smash that big thumbs up. I'll see you in the next one.